in the shelter, it sounded isolated. And sometimes I felt like uh, I'm too far from war. None. <laughs> However, I mean, even though the um, Russians were like uh, seven kilometers from me, I guess, but I still, I was maybe a bit um, ashamed that I'm so far. When I went the first time to Kiev, I had dinner with Anastasia and her uh, friend, uh, Sasha. They are musicians too. They told me that the th first three months of the war, they were in an underground studio um, where they were hiding with uh, 16 friends and most of them musicians. And it was a sound studio. Tell me, wh where are we going now? It's a music studio, which... Our be shelter. Yeah, which became our home for the last three months. This is our shelter. It was a home for more than 15 people during the last three months. And also our humanitarian center, where we were hiding and helping other people. Who and the were people who were hiding here were mostly musicians? Yes. Artists and musicians. And it is a, it's a musician yes, studio and a musician shelter. shelter. For yes. <laughs> now it doesn't look like before because it's closing, so we had a big flag here with a Russian ship go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> this is the famous scooter. This is the scooter who brought uh, to to, uh, to, Irpin, uh, yes. to Irpin. Actually, that microwave saved our volunteer life because he was hiding. It was just a lucky day for him because he wanted to rescue his microwave because he's from Irpin and he his house was bombed and destroyed. So he took his microwave and there and he um, he was caught by shells. So he were uh, he was laying down with the soldiers for two hours waiting until shelling ends, and he had to be killed, but um, microwave saved his life. <laughs> because there was, you know, there was a pillow inside this microwave to not break this glass uh, plate, you know. Yeah. So he, he didn't want it to, to break it. That catch the bullet. That catch the bullet, yes. Uh, the dog with his um, mom and dad, they were living here, sleeping here. Yes, it was a... That was another, place, yeah. another room where uh, four or five people with a cat yeah. Uh, we're so sleeping to, to, to three people in, here in and there yeah. also. Uh, of course, in uh, February and March it was extremely cold here. It's a pretty sound is a later place. <laughs> yeah, we didn't hear any sirens and uh, shells, shellings. That's why it was like cool and as well it was a bit dangerous because you know sometimes we were forgetting that there is a war so close to us because it's really silent here. <laughs> yeah. And Sasha, were you sometimes making music in that time? Uh, until we live. When you were in the shelter? Yes, a little bit, but first month I can't. And f fr from the April uh, I tried um, to play a few minutes per day uh, after 10, 12 minutes per day, and now I can play uh, a lot, yes. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Anastasia, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, as you can <laughs> see, there is a light. Yes. <laughs> when, when Butcha and Irpin were freed, you, you went there. How? Yeah, first day. <laughs> how could you handle that? I don't know. I was really excited to go there because I was um, getting a lot of notes, you know, and cards from people I helped like thank you notes and then i had the chance to see them of course not all of them survived so not all of them i could see uh, but yeah i was excited to go there it i was not scared maybe it's because i'm crazy or maybe it's because i got used to it because i'm i'm into this since 2014 the very first day i heard that European is free i i told everyone that i'm going and i went it was interesting because not everything was cleaned up so yeah but I was not scared I don't know I was pretty excited to see it myself because in the shelter 
it sound isolated and sometimes they felt like uh, I'm too far from war. None. <laughs> However, I mean, even though the um, Russians were like uh, seven kilometers from me, I guess, but I still, I was maybe a bit um, ashamed that I'm so far. Yeah. But how could you manage not be hunted by nightmares? Uh, I did. <laughs> I have them. Uh, I even had diagnosed PTSD, so... But it's... <coughs> and that's something to be proud of, because I'm not a soldier, right? It sounds ridiculous. Uh, I didn't see the real war, but, it's, but I, I have it, and I can't say that I was not scared, but... Usually I was more scared uh, sitting in the shelter, not knowing what goes next. But when I am there, when I see people, when I see like everything, uh, what's going on, I feel more relaxed actually, because I know the situation and I know how to handle it. Yeah. Instead of sitting and waiting something that I don't know what. Yeah, you told the aunt and me when we spoke a few days ago with you that this actually now it is more difficult than the first weeks. It's more difficult now because um, there are a lot of reasons. First of all, the war is far from us, but still it's here. We don't have light. Uh, we have like <coughs> problems with the water, etc. So it's just. I know it's it's ridiculous comparing with what people have to handle in her in her son in other occupied territories and that's why I feel bad as well because some of people I can see that they are too relaxed um, a lot of people just don't care more and also there is harder and harder to get donations to buy stuff that is needed but needs are still there so yeah it's a bit harder now uh, for me to to help other people because the bigger part of ukraine is free now so people feel more relaxed and this is um, something i uh, realized um, during this month that the farther you are from war the more like out of space you are. I mean, even uh, for people who are supporting us and helping, even for Ukrainians who are abroad, because I had a chance to to visit Poland for three months uh, of the summer I spent. I spent full summer in Poland. I can see that there is a difference between people who hear shellings, who sit under shellings, and who is far from shellings, because it's a magic of the human brain, our brain, um, actually what psychiatrists say that the main uh, work for our brain is not to remember, but to forget, right? We have to forget everything. So yeah, it's, but it's still, um, I feel sorry that it's, it, it goes too fast, the forgetting. Maybe as a last question, you were telling me as well uh, that you were going to go on tour or your boyfriend's going on tour. So you are going to travel a bit, but if you look at the broader future, how, what do you think? My boyfriend is on tour already, and I think I'll join him uh, somewhere abroad, because um, we are sitting here without any like resources for living, uh, no job, no like future for now for us unfortunately so i think we will try to go somewhere else and to earn some money because um since uh, i'm not very good in like um, collecting donations i have to earn a lot and uh, buy everything by myself <laughs> what what is needed for my um for my people yeah thank you very much for being with us and thank sharing you. your story we really hope to have you booked at some point, us or Paradiso, and then uh, hopefully we'll meet in real life. That would sure, be wonderful. I hope so. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank bye. you. Bye. Bye-bye.